goes nicely through the chanting of the process. In other words, it takes some effort. And what is the effort applied? The effort applied is that it is uh, about hearing about the Lord. So we have to hear the sound vibration very nicely. That makes the process effective. It's called shravanam, hearing, kirtanam, glorification. Hear the sound of your own voice chanting the holy names of the Lord. Now the tendency is the mind will wander to different thoughts. We don't know where it will go. It can go anywhere, and it does go anywhere sometimes. Sometimes in places that that's forbidden. But the idea is, as Krishna mentions in the Bhagavad Gita, whenever and wherever the mind wanders due to its unsteady and flickering nature, one should bring it back under the control of the self. And means again refocusing our attention on the sound vibration. If we do that regularly and uh, don't allow the mind to go away, in other words, we should be aware that we are hearing. Sometimes we get absorbed in thoughts and we become, we actually become unaware that we're not really hearing. But try to hear as best as you can. And that is really the connection with the sound vibration through the process of hearing. As the hearing becomes increased, it becomes more concentrated. As it becomes more concentrated, it becomes like a meditation. And then the sound and us making the sound of Krishna's name, chanting, and Krishna's name itself, which is being offered to us by Krishna, become one. We become, what we say, connected in that sound and we become absorbed in that sound. And that is what we say, the goal of Japa, to become absorbed in Krishna's holy name. And from there, there is many, many realizations about Krishna. The knowledge about Krishna, the experience of the happiness that one gets from chanting the holy name. But it requires some effort. Now, one, some of the things that take away from good Japa, we might say, or effective Japa, is uh, get rid of those cell phones, turn them off. <laughs> you know, put them on whatever you should. In other words, you know, forget about them during this time. Just make this a policy that when I'm chanting, I don't answer my phone, I don't offer any calls to anyone. In other words, just chant. And that focus helps us to concentrate. The more attention we put on the chanting, the more easier and more natural it becomes to connect with the chanting. So uh, avoid distractions, particularly, you know, the electronic distractions which are all around us. And another way um, that we should also, uh, don't be in a hurry to complete your chanting. And this is another way to minimize the effects of our chanting. We should chant in such a way that we're eager to connect with Krishna through the sound. We want to offer our devotion to Krishna by chanting his name. And it's not about finishing. Finishing will come in due course of time. The best way to prevent that from happening is you make a particular uh, you know, time period. I'm going to chant during this time. And then within that time period, when I'm done, then I'm, you know, whatever rounds I have completed, then that's fine. But uh, don't be in a hurry, because if you're in a hurry, you don't hear properly. And sometimes you don't pronounce also correctly. So these are some of the ways that we can avoid uh, minimizing the quality of our chanting. Don't be in a hurry. We call it, don't play beat the clock jaka. <laughs> it's not about, you know, racing against the clock. Uh, just consider, I have, I'm going to chant for this much time. Make that time period a preliminary before you begin. In other words, plan it 
And then when the time period is up, then you go on to whatever else you want to do. So this is uh, one way to prevent us from uh, minimizing the quality of our chanting. It's just that, just focus. Now another aspect of the same principle is create an environment which is conducive to hearing. Um, if you are living in a home, try to avoid chanting in the place where you do your daily activities. The tendency is that when you see things in the environment, it reminds you of what you have to do. Um, so best to have a, we call it sacred space. A place somewhere in the house, sometimes we make one room, our temple room, or a place that we can be free from distractions. And then take that uh, opportunity to simply focus during that time and avoid everything else. Um, and the concentrated effort helps to bring about the quality of the chanting. So these are some things we could consider in, in order to fortify, to you know, insulate our chanting away from all of the other distractions that are possibly there within the environment. Um, otherwise, we will find ourselves chanting, but we won't get very much from the chanting. It'll simply be uh, an exercise, but rather than an, an experience of connecting with Krishna through His holy name. These are some of the things we can think about. And of course, we find that there are many senior persons who teach certain principles about chanting. One of the things I will emphasize, and I think it's important, and this, if you can um, understand this principle, which is very simple, and apply it, you'll find that you'll, your japa will become more and more and something you look forward to. And it's simply training the mind in a certain way to receive the Holy Name. And it's simple. Just say before you chant, I want to chant, I get to chant, I love to chant. Just repeat that prior to your chanting. I want to chant. Not that, oh, it's something I have to do or something that I'm told to do. But actually, I want to chant. I look forward to it. And it's been given to me, therefore, it's a privilege. I get the chance. And not only that, it's so nice because it's Krishna himself in the sound of his name. I love the chant. <laughs> so that helps to uh, get the mind in the right mood. So we don't think, oh, you know, well, I got to do it, or whatever. The, whatever negativity may come up towards chanting the holy name, this helps to dispel that through this little meditation. Okay, these are some things um, that we can think about. So maybe, perhaps, we can open it up for questions, discussions. Yeah, just one. We should look forward to our chanting. And there's other things we can say. For instance, one of the, the more powerful effects of our chanting is to chant as early in the morning as possible. If, um, if you can finish your prescribed number of rounds early, then you'll find that um, it sets the foundation for the activities throughout the day. It helps to develop your, the clarity of vision you need in order to face the struggles that you have throughout the day. And it allows us to uh, chant at the most opportune time. 
which is nearer and more yours. When the mind is more free from the, dis- the anxieties of the always day-to-day responsibilities to be. Holy Jacob. So we can open up for any questions from the witness. Do we have a a listing of how many people are online listening? so much of a part of the goal of our chanting, that will automatically come when we chant properly within the right moment. But we should, that is not the goal of our chanting. The goal of our chanting is to purify our hearts and to offer Krishna's name back to Krishna in the mood of devotion. Feelings come and go. Until we get situated, fully on the spiritual platform. We are going in and out of different emotions, different feelings. But we should feel peaceful. We should feel uh, without any fear. The world today is somewhat more fearful than any due to the present situation. People are fearful and more fearful than ever. And so, chanting is meant, and it it, it is geared to actually develop fearlessness. That's, I would say, that quality is one of the more uh, initial qualities, and the first qualities that come about by proper chanting, where we, we lose the sense of fear. Unnecessary fear. There's, there's what we say, necessary fear. But that's how to live in such a way as not to jeopardize our situation. But that, that's more like cautionary. But there are people who are fear, fearful for whatever reason. We know that Krishna is there, the Holy Name is there, there's nothing to fear. That should be an experience that we have. Thank you, Mother. Um, that is very helpful. Um, but the second uh, question I was having is that, um, like, for me, like with a small kid right now, it's kind of hard to really find that kind of time that I can put all my hands together. Um, I have to actually chant most of my japa in bits and pieces. So I was just um, thinking like in circumstances like this, um, how can we um, actually have um, the attention? Because I find myself that when we chant most of the rounds together, then the attention span is much better than doing it in like bits and pieces through the day. So, uh, if you could please help me. Um, well, yeah, I've 
come across this question quite often by many mothers, they ask, you know, because the baby becomes the first responsibility. And you can't, you can't curtail that. You have to give the baby whatever it needs. That's as much tension. Um, so, and that question came up with one lady in London. And I gave her Prabhupada's formula, which was four, 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 and four. Four times four, in other words, find four times during the day, you can chant four times, four rounds each time. And then you can complete your 16 rounds. Then again, you have to see how to, how that works along with the responsibilities of taking care of the child. Um, that's a formula. That's nice. The lady who asked the question adopted it and she was very happy. She was able to do it. And she found that before that she couldn't chant 16 rounds. But then after that she was able to easily do it based on that, that formula. But uh, if you want to do it like six, six and four, or five, five and six, you know. In other words, it becomes obvious you can't sit down and chant 16 rounds with a little child. You just, you know, they require attention. And that's foremost, you can't neglect that. So find that formula that works for you. And you call it bits and pieces, but we call it, you know, being practical. ask you uh, practically like in a home while organizing it I was always thinking you know like putting Krishna in the central place of the home like in the living room but then when you mentioned it that it's good to have a sacred space sacred uh, place to chant I find it also logical so how to combine those two things like uh, having it in the center of the house and not just in some room aside but also having that, that sacred space uh, yeah well, that sacred space is, you know, we call it the temple. So one room for Krishna. In that room you can use for, for your devotional activities. Yeah, that's just, I mean, otherwise, you know, you make the whole house like a one big temple room, then, uh, you know, you're going to find yourself becoming distracted easier, anyway. I, I, I struggle with that because I always chant my rounds in the house, and I notice a lot of things when I'm chanting. Sometimes my mind goes to these things, and I'm thinking, you know, I have to deal with that later. Or sometimes it becomes even so strong that I even deal with it right away. But then again, I have to check, and I check myself and say, no, this is not the best. Now, if you can sit in one place and chant, that's the best. But if you have to walk sometimes, then that's where it becomes more likely to get distracted. There is a question online from Jabash Seva, Hare Krishna Maharaj. You mentioned previously in your Boston workshop about hearing one mantra. When we have thoughts in our mind related to our service, is it something we need to ignore and re-hear the mantra or is that okay to entertain those thoughts? Better do 
although it's not it's not considered to be distracting at the same time japa means to focus on the sound of the holy name best if you can leave these things to later what some senior devotees do and of course this can also be a distraction keep a pencil and paper there somewhere and then when you get some thought that you feel is important you write it down and forget about it but um, the idea is whatever it is even even if it seems very devotional it's not so important just keep your there's no thought as important as concentrating on the sound vibration of Krishna's voice. That's what it's all about. It's japa meditation. So meditation means absorption in the sound. So just put those thoughts aside. If they come back later, that's nice. If you want to write them down, that's okay. But that's that can also be very distracting also. But the idea is not to think, well, it's devotional service and therefore it's just as important. Chanting means chanting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes we see that um, devotees accept initiation and they are very enthusiastic at the time, but over the course of a few years or sometimes many years, they lose the they lose their practice of chanting sixteen rounds. Sometimes completely like so do you have any like suggestions for such people? Like well, how to come back? Sadhu Sangha. That's why you lose it because you don't take a sufficient amount of time to associate with devotees. When you associate with devotees, you remind her of devotional activities and you get a chance to serve the devotees. And so that's why it's given a lot of emphasis the importance of association as the foundation for all the activities we perform in devotional as particularly chanting. So we need to take regular association with devotees. And that's why people kind of drift away. That's the main reason. There's other reasons. There could be other reasons. The thing is, you have to, if you want to really continue to chant each day, you have to make it a part of a regulated part of your day. It has to be regulated. You can't think, oh, when I have time, I'll chant. There's always, then, there's always um, the material energy will always give you something to do. Understand you're in a helpless position, and you are. This world, material world, is to call Yama Shashwata. It's dangerous at every step. Everyone, especially now, everyone is more aware that at any moment I can get sick. So, this is one example of how there is danger at every step. But you know, just life itself is a very dangerous. And we're here, and the material energy is entrapping us in different ways. And Krishna is a hoaxija, he's beyond the range of our senses. So there are so many difficulties, or what we say, uh, obstacles that we have to overcome in order to connect with Krishna. So, uh, yeah, when we, when we realize we're helpless, who we are, and we can't save ourselves, 
Bhaktivinoda Thakur even explains, no one can chant attentive japa unless they pray for attentive japa. Srila yeah. Haridas Thakur is the object of that prayer. The prayer goes, uh, O Vaisnav Thakur, alone I have no hope to chant the holy names of Lord Hari. Please be merciful to me and with a particle of faith give me the treasure of the holy name of Krishna. That's the prayer by Bhakti Vinod Thakur to Srila Rupa Goswami, I mean to Srila Haridas Thakur. So uh, we're helpless. Even if we think we can chant, we have all the ideas on how to chant nicely, still we have to pray. We're helpless. And that helplessness is, is our strength because it allows for Krishna's mercy to descend. So yeah, that's we're helpless. There is another question on me. This is from Kesho Kishore Prabhu. Maharaj, chanting the Maha Mantra is a fundamental part of part in my daily routine. But sometimes the mantra Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram grabs my attention. Perhaps because the sound cadence and vibration, should I carry on or should I stop stop it and begin? Well if you chant Hare Krishna, chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> You know, don't change mantras. See, Ram Jaira is nice. It's very nice. But then again, we have Maha Mantra. My Maha Mantra is the recommended mantra in this age is to use the Dharma. Kalair Daushini Dirajan Asti Eku Maha Guna Kirtana Eva Krishnasya. Mukta Sangha Namaya. So yeah, you can share Sri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram anytime. That's very nice, very wonderful. But when you're chanting Hare Krishna, that should be the focus. There is one more question online from Balarama. Uh, Balarama. Uh, Hare Krishna, do we need to be more aware of hearing or pronunciation? Hmm. The, the awareness that comes by way of by hearing is also fortified by pronunciation. When pronunciation is clear and hearing becomes more natural. If you're not pronouncing it clearly, it's to absorb yourself in the sound will not be possible practically. So that's why we emphasize clear pronunciation. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. This is not Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, 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 <laughs> you know, we've done experiments by putting tape recorders in places around the temple and listening and recording different devotees japa and then you wonder what what language it is, what mantra it is, whether they're, you know, creating a new language or Oh, I writes about that in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. And it's there, he says, one should clearly sound the mantra and avoid the hissing sound. 
using the upper and lower lip when she chant clearly. That's there in the Shastra. So Prabhupada does, and in a few lectures he's also um, brought up that subject, the importance of clearly hearing the sound, clearly chanting the sound. Wow, already. That's fast. You married already and you have your first kid. <laughs> What's your name? Raja. Raja. Shamsaki's daughter. Oh, okay. Shamsaki's. Okay. May 22nd, 2022. Fifteen. Okay. Right. Close. Okay. So these are some things we can seriously consider. If you make japa the most important part of your day, then your whole day will be, what we say, nice. Mantras are called the beach mantra, seed mantra. And it's very difficult to chant dietary properly. It's, that's why it's given by the guru on the second initiation directly. It will aid, and once we perform dietary nicely and properly, it will aid in the quality of our chanting Hare Krishna. Two? Yes. <laughs> Two of them. Yes. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Two hands. Yes. <laughs> Need more hands. <laughs> well, you got you got help. <laughs> yeah. So it will help to bring quality to our chanting. The actual Gayatri mantra is the first line of Gayatri. We chant seven lines of Gayatri. There's Gayatri, there's Brahma Gayatri, which is Gayatri. Then there's Guru Gayatri, and then there's Guru Gayatri. And then Gopal Gayatri. And then ultimately the last line is Radharani. So seven lines, but the first, Gayatri is the first line, which is the Brahma Gayatri. And that is, that is mentioned as being the sound of Krishna's flute. Particular sound vibration. Yeah. So Gayatri will help with our chanting of Jalpa. We have to practice chanting Gayatri. It's a, it's, a, it's a real, it's an effort to really perfect Gayatri. More so than chanting Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. That's why Hare Krishna is freely given. Although it is the Maha Mantra, the greatest of Maha Mantra, Gayatri is not given that position. But still, uh, to perfect Gayatri is very difficult. That's why it's only given by the Guru um, after the devotee is qualified by execution, devotion, service for a number of years. Okay. Mm -hmm. You practice.
Try if you can hear, time. if you can hear every word of the Gayatri mantra, that would be perfect. Because mm-hmm. Gayatri is is not spoken; it's silent, gently, and it becomes easier for the mind to wander when it's silent. Mm-hmm. The mind wanders anyway, even when we chant loudly with the holy name. But even more so when we try to chant silently. Unless the mind is very, very controlled and very, very free from any desire for material, material, you know, sense gratification. Guide to reason and effort. But it's there. So we should try to perfect our Gayatri, which will help us in chanting our, our Krishna Mahalachi also. There's many things that support the chanting. Proper relationships with devotees is one of the main things that allows chanting to develop. When we have nice and very Krishna conscious relationships with all devotees, then it becomes easier to chant the Hare Krishna Mahalachana. And if we're reading Prabhupada's books, that also will support our chanting. Which is also chanting, also. Because when we're reading, that's another form of chanting. I was just thinking about, uh, I was wondering if you could speak about being comfortable versus um, being too comfortable, I guess, because we can't artificially take steps that we're not comfortable taking, but at the same time, uh, we're in our comfort zone, if we're not going to progress forward. So, so the question is? forward, but not move too forward, but still push yourself forward. Well, it takes a little evaluation to see. First of all, you have to want to move forward. The comfort zone is a place that you don't want to move forward. (laughs) You're thinking, well, you know, I'm okay where I am now, but we have to understand how the whole process works. You can't stay in one place. If you're not making an effort to to move forward in your spiritual practice, you're going backwards automatically. Mm. Mm. Trying to stay within a certain range or becoming less, what we say, effort, you'll go backwards because the material energy is, works in such a way that it'll push us more and more down. You have to be fighting against that by making efforts to move forward. Just the way the spiritual energy and material energy work. So, um, therefore, we want to, we think comfort zone means Maya, that's all it really is. So, the idea is to avoid, you know, getting complacent. And how do you do that? Think how to improve the quality of whatever you're doing. This is one of the ways. Quantity and quality. Both of them are principles of increase, but especially quality. All right, I'm chanting, but still I want to increase the quality of my chanting when my hearing is even deeper. My attention is more constant. Um, And apply that to anything. Reading, relationships, all of those can be qualitized by putting an effort to make them better. So that helps us not to fall into a comfort zone and it helps us to get out of a so called comfort zone when we're in it. <laughs> Let me put more quality in whatever I'm doing. 
And then also quantity is another feature of that. Maybe I should take on another service. Mm -hmm. And want to avoid that. And one of the easiest ways is good association. It pushes you to do more. Can't get complacent when you're around people who are seriously executing devotional service. It doesn't work. Children to chant. How to encourage children to chant? Well, depends how you, how, how young they are. Usually, we say that if they're below seven years old, we don't really put them on beads. Just let them hear the mantra and chant whenever they just encourage them to chant by maybe making songs of the mantra. But when they get around seven or eight years old, we can start to explain to them the importance of chanting and give them some beads like that. But before then, you know, it's really, it's, it's really hard for them to accept that, that kind of discipline that this their childlike nature of course, is like to go this way and that way. You're a little older, then you give them a set of beads and tell them to practice. Uh, Hare Krishna, Prabhu, Okay. Did we exhaust our questions? My son is 10 years old. So that's the second half of her question. My son is 10 years old. Yeah, explain to him. Give him a set of the beads and explain to him the chant. You know, chant with him. The way he feels more inspired to chant. get a little strong if you don't chant no allowance <laughs> you can't chant I'm not going to let you go out and play with your friends <laughs> get a little strong that, that age between 6 and 14, 15 is called the formative years that's where you pick up all the foundations of everything that you use in your life later on. So, Chandra Pandit gives us the formula that during these times, the parents should be a little bit strict with the children between the ages of 6 and, 10, and, six and 14. Loving, but strict. Otherwise, they're under their young childlike nature will you know, put bring them anywhere and do anything. That time, they need to be guided really strongly. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Where do you see the number? She had the second one. There's two videos going.